Hi students and welcome to today's Live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. I hope that all of you have had a fantastic week. I hope that you're looking forward to an amazing weekend. Uh, in this class, everyone, we are looking at an IELTS listening section. Specifically, these topics will be uh, a man registering for football and information about the Titanic. This will be part one and part two of the uh, listening section uh, today. We will listen to the audio, we will discuss the answers, and I will give you strategies and tips to get some nice high band scores for your IELTS listening section. Welcome Riyadh, hi Hanil, Deepak. Naresh, Tina, nice to see many people joining in. This is a subscribers chat class, so you do need to subscribe to the channel uh, to join the chat. Uh, it's a good idea because you will learn regularly and get notifications of all these uh, live classes. Welcome Carolina, our chat moderator. Um, hi Nancy, uh, good to have Lamia and other members in the class as well. Uh, students, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there for general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp.com. Uh, we use our websites like uh, textbooks uh, and guides for these live classes. We have six original practice exams, interactive courses, videos, audio CDs, and we use these uh, for these live classes. So if you like our live classes, definitely uh, join our premium IELTS package, aehelp.com. Click that big uh, red button that's just above my head there uh, to join the premium package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access, and we are an IDP affiliate, British Council partner. IELTS Test Registration Center, so you are in great hands with us. I am a certified British Council agent. Uh, this is our general IELTS website here with the green background. Uh, now the listening section, uh, just the first tip, it's the same for the academic and the general IELTS. So the listening and the speaking sections are the same. Um, so you will find the same listening materials on our general IELTS website. Click that big red button. And you can use the code um, TARGET9. It's with our most recent uh, video on the YouTube channel to get a 20% discount off the websites. Again, it's just a one-time payment and you can use it as long as you need to. So check it out. We will use this in just a few minutes to listen to the audio section for the IELTS exam. Again, use that code uh, TARGET9. We have apps, of course, uh, native apps for your phone. Uh, check out Academic IELTS Help. Link the app to the website, Academic um, or aehelp.com and uh, the app General IELTS Help will link to the web account gieltshelp.com so you can learn from the same account on your phone or uh, computer. And uh, of course we have Instagram where you can get new vocabulary. You can uh, also find our live class schedules there. Um, so check out IELTS underscore aehelp, gieltshelp. Help. And if you still have questions, uh, send me an email. I'm always happy to answer questions. Uh, my email is adrian at uh, aehelp.com. Uh, students, we've got this listening class right now. Um, and then tomorrow we will have uh, speaking classes. We'll have speaking part two for members and speaking part three for everyone. And if you like to practice your IELTS uh, speaking, definitely check out our newest video that we just released a few hours ago. It's great practice to improve your English communication. I will copy that into um, the link. There you go. BB's asking, um, do you teach or examine people? BB, I teach, examine, and develop IELTS exams and train people, people for examining and for uh, assessing. So I do it all. Um, all right, 
Okay, uh, so students, uh, let's get into it. Okay, uh, without further ado, so we're going to uh, do this as we listen, okay? In the IELTS exam, you answer questions while you listen, okay? So we're going to uh, listen and answer questions. Now, um, right away, just a big tip here. This is a starting tip, okay? Keep this in mind. Um, you have about 90 seconds uh, instruction time at the start of the uh, listening uh, section, okay? And you want to use this time to look at the topics of every part of the four parts, okay? Uh, so your brain can uh, begin to think of this information. Let me show you what I mean. Um, so we will uh, we will start the listening, and you will notice that at the beginning, I'm going to go through each of the four parts and look at some of the questions, look for some key words, so I get an idea. Now uh, we will have a new feature in today's class as well for answering the questions, and I hope it's um, it's a tool that all of you will really like. It will. Uh, give everybody a chance to kind of interact with me. So um, an, an exciting surprise to look forward to uh, when we're um, looking at the uh, questions. Now students, uh, while we listen, write your questions into a uh, separate document or on a separate piece of paper. Do not put your answers in the chat because that will confuse other viewers, uh, especially if you're putting wrong answers into the chat. So um, save your answers separately. Wait until the end of uh, listening part one, and then we will go over the questions together as a class, and we will be uh, discussing strategies as we do that. So um, for right now, uh, if you have a headset like me, put that on, it's a good idea. That's what you do when you do the computer-based exam, absolutely. Um, in most exam centers now, you will all have a headphone. Um, all right, so let's jump over to our website. Um, again, uh, we're going into my student account here. Um, at the top of this page, there's a login to get into your my student account. Uh, today we are looking at our first exam. So um, if you have access to our materials, uh, this is uh, section one or part one of uh, listening test one. So it will be CD one. And um, uh, in your uh, premium package, that's right here, your audio CDs, you click on that and then uh, you have uh, all of the different CDs here. So here we go, everybody. We're going to listen, answer questions, and then we'll share the answers after we're done with part one, okay? And we'll look at the topic of all of the different parts while we listen. So here we go, get ready, everybody. This recording is copyrighted by Two Think One Solutions, Inc. and World ESL Tutors. You will hear several different recordings and you will answer questions on what you hear. There will be time given to read the instructions and questions and you will be given a chance to check your work. The recordings will be played only once. The test is made up of four sections. At the end of the test you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Listening section one. You will hear a conversation between two men as one of the men registers for a football league. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example. This time only, the conversation relating to this question will be played. Hello there. I'd like to register for the Autumn Men's Football League. All right. Uh, in what town will you be playing? I'd like to play in Chester, but I'd be willing to travel to Liverpool if I had to. 
The man says he wants to play in Chester, so B has been indicated for you. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Hello there. I'd like to register for the Autumn Men's Football League. All right. Uh, in what town will you be playing? I'd like to play in Chester, but I'd be willing to travel to Liverpool if I had to. Well, we have two spots left open on the team in Chester and five spots open on the team in Liverpool. There's a very good chance you would have to try out for the team in Chester. Are you a good player? I consider myself a good player, yes. I have been to a number of the Autumn Men's League games in the past, just as a spectator, and I'm sure I would have no trouble fitting in. OK, good. So we will register you for Chester then. I just need to get some information from you, starting with your position. Where on the field do you prefer to play? I'm a midfielder, although really I can play anywhere aside from goalkeeper. Oh, I forgot to ask your name. Right, I guess that's important. My name is Steve Tremell. Would you mind spelling Tremell for me? Certainly. Tremell is spelled T R A M M E L L. Right, now I need your home address, including your postcode. I live in Chester, of course, at 452 King George Avenue. The postcode is MS868P4. MS868P4? Yes, that's right. And your date of birth, sir? The 8th of September, 1986. OK. Now I need your phone number. Just a mobile number will do. I don't have a mobile phone right now, unfortunately. I can give you my girlfriend's number instead. That would be all right, I suppose. Good. Her number is 329-63-3270. Fine. I think that's all the information I need to gather from you. Do you have any questions? Yes, I do have a couple. First, when does the season start? The season starts on the 28th of September, although your first game is later, I think. Let me check the schedule. Yes, your first game is October the 1st in Liverpool. Let me make a copy of the schedule for you. Thank you. Could you also tell me how long each game is? Each game has two halves, 40 minutes each half, so the game is 80 minutes long. That's a little shorter than the other leagues I've played in. Games are usually 90 minutes. Yes, our spring and summer leagues are 90 minute games, but our autumn league has only 80 minute games. I think it has something to do with the poor weather. You now have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 6 to 10. OK, can you tell me how many players are on each team? And I mean on the whole team, not just the players on the pitch. Usually there are five additional players to the 11 on the pitch. So there are 16 players on each roster. We generally find that to be the perfect number. It allows for a few players to miss a game, but still allows lots of playing time for each player. Yes. Playing time is what I was worried about. I don't want to pay my money and then sit on the sidelines the whole season. Are there minimum playing time requirements? Yes, each player must play a minimum of half a game, so you are guaranteed at least 40 minutes of playing time per game. Wonderful. That puts my mind at ease. Could you tell me what facility we play at in Chester? That information is on the schedule, along with the addresses of all the other facilities in the league. Here's your schedule. Thank you. Oh good, it states we play two streets from my flat. How convenient. That is very lucky. Do you have any more questions? No, I think that's it. Oh wait, how much does it cost to register? Uh, it's going to be £125 for the season, including all fees. How would you like to pay? I'll be paying cash. Right. Would you like a receipt? Um, if you find that it doesn't work out time-wise, you can always bring the receipt back and we will give That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. 
All right, students. So that um, is listening section one. Let me just stop the uh, audio here. And um, now uh, use that um, 30 uh, seconds always to review your answers. So look at the spelling. Look at the instructions. Um, a lot of students look at the next uh, part during that time, but it's not a good idea. You should spend that 30 seconds reviewing because uh, often you will find uh, one or two mistakes that can easily save you a score or two. And they will give you time to look at the questions for the next part anyway. So uh, before we go forward, um, just a quick question here. So we did this strategy. You notice that I looked at uh, the different um, uh, parts of this whole listening uh, section of the IELTS exam and of course uh, here uh, part one was about um, a man registering for football right so football registration okay now I had a chance to look at part two three and four as well and so did you because I was highlighting some of the key words there um, so just before we look at the answers, um, what was part two or what is part two going to be about? So based on what we saw there, what is um, part two going to be about? And Sarah, yeah, it should be easy. So part one is fairly easy, right? Part two, part three, part four get a lot more difficult. Um, so part two was about the Titanic, absolutely. Okay, uh, how about part three? Okay, yep, so something about the Titanic. I don't know if it's about the Titanic sinking, Baljeet, but I'm definitely sure it's about the Titanic. Um, so we saw the word Titanic, we saw even a picture of the Titanic, so that was pretty, pretty quick to recognize that it will be about the Titanic. Okay, what about uh, part three? So how about part three? That was a little bit trickier maybe. Um, Sarah, no climate change, I think it was for part four, okay? Part three was something else. Part four is usually easy to uh, identify because they almost always kind of give you the topic right away at the start, okay? Uh, that's right, uh, Baljeet, it was a group discussion. So if nothing else, you know that in this one, there will be multiple speakers. And that's very common for part two and part three is having multiple speakers. And then part four um, will be about climate change. Okay, good. Um, so that's what part one, part two, part three, part four will be about. And now our brain is thinking about this information. Uh, keep in mind, students, that the brain does uh, a lot of uh, different um, activities uh, even when we're not consciously thinking of it so it's uh, good to get the brain moving get the brain working on this information before you get to it okay so we're going to answer some questions together and we're trying out a new piece of um, software um, today so uh, just to kind of have fun with this we're going to use this to answer uh, some questions okay uh, for the listening um, and um, just to see how this is working for us um, I want to I'm curious uh, where our viewers are from so what countries are uh, the uh, subscribers from and um, you can um, you can give me your answer so where are you from and when you give me the answer hopefully if this is working as it should we should kind of see um, this pop up so um, we have Nancy from India, Otabek from Uzbekistan, and yeah, so we're starting to see different um, kind of uh, pop-ups here of where you're from. So we've got um, somebody from Tashkent, uh, we've got uh, uh, from Delhi, India, we've got people from, uh, let's see, Kathmandu, Nepal, that's awesome. Uh, we've got Tehran, Iran. That's great. Really cool. Okay, so notice how we can kind of get a picture of the world. We've got uh, somebody from Paraguay. That's pretty, 
that's pretty awesome. I didn't know we had a viewer from Paraguay. And we've got somebody from uh, Lushaka, Zambia. Okay, we've got Bogota, Colombia coming up here. So we've got a good range of uh, people. We've got a couple people coming in from, uh, from Europe as well. France, Italy, Sudan. Fun. All right. So uh, that's what, oh, let me kind of get that centered. So there, you, you're kind of starting to see who's all in the class and where you're all from. Fantastic. Look at that. Ooh, even more. We've got somebody from Australia joining us from Canberra. Mr. Sagar from Canberra, Australia. I hope I hope all is going. You're like one day ahead of me there. You're in tomorrow for me. All right. We've got Taiwan popping up. We've got Taipei. We've got Ray Chang from Taipei, Taiwan. That is awesome. Okay, well, let's not get lost here in where we're all at. I hope wherever you are, you're having a great time, and I hope you're looking forward to a fantastic weekend. Uh, let's get into... Um, some of these questions uh, for this listening section and we'll get to interact uh, for these questions as well okay all right um, so in the uh, listening um, you had this example question okay the example question was uh, where would the man like uh, to play uh, football Okay, now this question, where would the man like to play football? Let me try to size this for us there, um, was an example. So you don't have to worry about this, especially because you do not have an example question in the listening section since 2020. And this is confusing for some students because uh, sometimes you see these example uh, questions in practice materials, of course, because there are a lot of practice materials that are pre-2020. So just an important tip for everybody, um, no example question for your exams now, okay? That ended in 2020. If you have it in your practice material, it means your practice material is pre-2020, which is still okay, just don't expect it, okay, um, in, um, in this uh, uh, session, so, or in, in your real exam, I should say. Um, so here, uh, the man uh, would like to play football, I believe, in Chester. We don't need to worry about that right now. Uh, we're going to go to our next question, which is how many football matches has the man played in the league? I believe this was our uh, first question. Yeah. So our first question was how many matches has the man played in the league? Now notice how the strategy for multiple choice questions is I started to think about this as a statement. So like I have been to 100 matches or I have been to a whole bunch of matches. Now before you give your answer, just a second, let's, uh, let's get back here to our poll, okay? Um, so now you can give me your answers. Okay, so instead of, um, so in the exam, of course, you're going to put A, B, C, uh, but for uh, this uh, session, what I want you to do is I just want you to put uh, one if you think it's A, uh, two if you think it's B, three if you think it's C. That means one if you think it's 10 matches, two if you think it's zero matches, and um, C if you think it is uh, 40 to 50 matches okay so so far we have a uh, hundred percent of votes for two anybody think it's one or three yeah that's right okay so uh, it looks like all of you got this so far which is great um, it was a two so we've got a well we've got a couple people now thinking it's 40 to 50 uh, the man says, um, I have uh, been, so he has not played, but he has uh, been there, okay? So he has been there as the uh, spectator. He says, I have been there, but only as a spectator. So the correct answer, everyone, is uh, B0, okay? So whoever chose number two or B, 
um, you've got the correct answer. And it looks like most of you got that, which is fantastic. Okay. All right. Um, let's take a look at the next question, uh, which is what position does the man play? And um, he kind of repeated this. So um, the uh, person that's taking the information, he says, okay, I need some information for, from you. First of all, uh, what uh, position do you play? So uh, we had three choices, A, midfield, B, goalkeeper, or C, uh, striker, okay? Um, so let's see um, what you're answering. And it looks like um, everybody's answering number one so far, which is midfielder. Uh, now we've got a couple people answering B, goalkeeper. Nobody's answering striker. That's good. Because they never said striker, right? So the man did not say striker. He said, um, I'm a midfielder. And careful because the man said, um, I can play anything aside from goalkeeper. Um, this means, so the word aside means that uh, he does not play, okay? Aside is like uh, saying besides. So the correct answer here uh, was uh, midfield A. Uh, so you want to put A uh, in this answer, okay? All right, so if you marked A, midfield, you had the correct answer, okay? All right. Uh, let's uh, go to the next question. These are were fill in the blanks. So um, here we had to get his name. Okay, so uh, what was uh, his name? Okay, and it's going to show the top uh, 50 answers here. So let's see what you come up with. Okay, uh, we've got a lot of people putting in uh, Tramel. Okay, let's, uh, oh, let's size here a little bit so you can see it better. Yeah, so we've got Tramel, Tramel. Um, and we've got lots of different ways. We're only looking, we've got a sad face <laughs> as well. We got Tranel with N's. Okay, let me kind of size this for you a little bit here so you can see it. Okay, so we've got, we've got a few different uh, answers, all right? Um, I don't really see the correct answer yet, but I do see it in the chat. Okay. All right. Um, the correct answer here, for those of you who have it, is Tramel, spelt like this. Tramel. Um, double, e, double M, double L. So if you had this answer, then you have the correct answer. Okay. Now, very importantly, on the IELTS um, exam, you need uh, the capital T, okay? If you write a small t, you're going to get it wrong. And you need the two M's and you need the two L's, okay? So it has to be Tramel with um, double M, double L, capital T. Okay, now there is a little trick. So in the paper-based exam or the computer-based exam, you can use all capital letters. So you could write Tremel like this. Okay, this would also be a correct answer. All right. Um, you know, a lot of our viewers watch uh, these classes regularly, and uh, this is a new feature, this kind of interactive answering question feature. Uh, we're working together with Stream Alive on this. Um, how do you like it so far? So how do you like this kind of um, way of doing uh, these questions where you get to see your answers come up on the screen a little bit? Are you having fun with it? Do you like it? Let me know your thoughts. Um, again, 
you can um, send me an email uh, about the classes as well, everybody. So uh, remember that my email is uh, adrian at aehelp.com and I would love to hear your opinion about this feature for our listening class. We will probably use this for our reading classes as well, okay? So if you like it, uh, let me know, all right? If you want to see the actual question sheets for listening, of course, they were at the beginning of the video, um, and you also have them in our Premium IELTS course as well. So that's good, okay, all right. I kind of see that most people enjoy it and like it, which is good. All right, let's keep going with it. And, you know, it's in development, um, these features as well, so they'll just get better and better every time. Okay, let's check out uh, the uh, next question, which was uh, postal code. So here's our next question um, from this listening section. It was the postal code uh, for... Um, for Mr. Tremel, Stephen Tremel. Uh, so let me just fire this up. There we go. Um, postal code. Um, so what was the postal code? All right, we have uh, some answers coming up. That's great. Um, we have MS eight six eight P four MS eight six eight P four. Yeah, uh, that's correct, okay? And you don't have to worry about spacing. So um, if you have uh, spacing there, then uh, then that's not necessary, okay? So we have MS868P4, yep, that's good. All right, looks like most of you have the right answer. So it's uh, I recommend for postal codes uh, and for this kind of information, use capital, so MS86. 8P4, especially when you're doing the paper-based exam, um, for this kind of information, uh, use capital letters because they look clearer, okay? And oftentimes when you're filling out a form, like a registration form, then you're using these capital letters, okay? So you don't have to worry about spaces, but I do recommend capital letters instead of uh, small letters for this type of number letter sequence, okay? Like license plate, uh, for example, would be another one, or social security number uh, could be another one where you have some letters combined with numbers, okay? All right, um, let's go to the next question. Um, so this one was a matching one. Uh, let's uh, do this one. So this was question number five. And here you had four options. So let me uh, kind of get all four options up there for us. Now this was a little, little bit tricky. So here you had to uh, match the time with the event. So when is Steve's first match? Was it September 30, September 28th? October and so here we have a little bit larger variety so it looks like um, some people are saying that uh, the first match was uh, September 28th uh, and a lot of people are saying October 1st the correct answer is October 1st September 28th is wrong okay so D is correct um, what's the difference so why why is September 28th wrong what did uh, the person say in the audio? Okay, the big difference is that September 28th is the season start. Okay, so season start. But the first match, so be careful about this. In the listening, they sometimes have this kind of tricky information where they're like, oh, the season will start uh, on the 28th, but your first match is actually a little bit later. It's October 1st, right? And they kind of repeat that information, so be patient, okay? All right, so uh, this was the first game. And you have to really pay attention to the question because the question says first match, not season start. If the question says uh, season start, then it would have been correct. Okay, does that make sense, everybody? 
Okay, so that was the first game. All right, um, let's go to the next question. Um, you had a little bit of a break here. And then you had this next question. Um, how many players on the roster? So how many players were on the roster? All right, we've got the word 16 and we've got the number 16. Students, when you can use the number, always use the number, okay? So always use the number. It's easier, it's faster, no spelling mistakes. So 16, look at you go. A whole bunch of people got that one. There's 16, yeah. Not 60 minutes, it was 16. All right, um, only put your answer in once. The way this is set up is um, the software only registers one answer, everyone, okay? So if you had 16 players on the roster, that was good, okay? This was a uh, small table that you had to fill in. And then uh, the second uh, question on that table was the minimum playing time, okay? So what was the uh, minimum playing time? All right. Um, so we've got uh, 40 minutes. We've got 40. We've got 40 minutes with a space. We've got a lot of answers coming in. That's great. Um, so um, this is a correct answer. Okay. Um, just the word or just the number 40 is wrong. Okay. Um, let me show you why, okay? So let me just quickly uh, jump back to the actual question sheet here. So right now, uh, we're looking at this table question here, okay? And we're looking at this question, the minimum playing time. Notice how it says uh, no more than two words, okay? Now here we have minimum playing time. The correct answer, is uh, 40 minutes, okay, so 40, and you can write mins like that, okay, that's the easiest answer. You need both the number and the word minutes or the abbreviation mins to get this one correct, okay? Uh, the reason why is because if you just put 40, according to the IELTS, it's not specific enough, so they don't know if you're, you mean 40 seconds, 40 hours, um, so you have to put minutes, the word minutes, and you kind of get a hint with this um, uh, two words, right? So two words, that gives you an idea that one of them has to be two words, okay? All right, um, so let's go to number eight here. Um, we're just gonna jump back and uh, get a poll from everybody, okay? Uh, so the next question is, why does the man say that he is uh, lucky? Okay. Um, so I see you have some questions there, okay? Um, and that's kind of different than what this should be doing. Let me just check uh, what's going on there. Um, this should be, okay, okay. Uh, so let's see, let's run this one. Uh, uh, yeah, it should be a poll, let me see. Maybe I forgot to put the options for this one. Okay, um, then let's just do this from the sheet. I'm also learning this software. So let's just do it from the, the sheet here and then we'll look at the last two. So why does the man say that he's lucky? Is it A, because he is able to find a team to play on? Is it B, there is a minimum playing time requirement, or is it C, the playing field is close to where he lives? Okay, um, a lot of people are answering C. C is the correct answer. Um, the field is close to where he lives. Does anybody remember what he says? So how close is he? This is my bonus question here. Bonus question time. Um, and you should do this when you're practicing listening at home. You should ask additional questions so that you know that you're not just guessing the answer, but you actually know the answer. How far uh, does 
the man live from the playing field? So how far does he live? Uh, Nancy says two lanes apart. Uh, Baljeet says two blocks. That's right. Good job, Baljeet. Super thumbs up. The answer was two blocks away. Oh, good. He says, oh, good. I can remember exactly what he said. He said, oh, good. That's just two blocks from my house. Okay, so that's paraphrasing. Um, the audio and the answers are often paraphrased. You don't hear the exact same information as the choice. So the man says, that is lucky. Okay, so you have to kind of listen for some of those key words like lucky and then um, listen for the paraphrasing like, oh, I live just two blocks. Okay. All right, um, let's go to question nine. This is a bit of uh, filling in the blanks here. Um, so here, um, the man asks, what is the cost of the football league? Uh, he has a couple of questions, right? He says, do you have any questions? And he says, yes, I do. And I can see uh, the popular answer here is 125 pounds. Yes, that is correct. And we even have the uh, symbol pounds coming up for some of those questions. When you can use the symbol, like the symbol for pound, which looks like that, right? Then uh, use the symbol instead of the word. It's faster and the IELTS is okay with you using the symbol. The correct answer was 125 pounds. So hopefully you got that correct. Um, absolutely, uh, 125 uh, pounds. Now, if the question includes pounds, then I don't need to write it. In fact, I should not write the word pounds if it's included in the question. So let's take a look at the question. If it includes the word pounds or the symbol for pounds, we don't need to use it. Okay, it's not included for us here, so we definitely need to put 125 pounds or the symbol. And yes, you can use the small pounds. It doesn't have to be capital, like dollars. We don't capitalize it, okay? But again, if you can use the symbol, use the symbol instead. Don't use both, okay? So 125 pounds. All right, um, last question. Let's see what you think it is. Um, here we go. Uh, let's see who got this. How does the man pay for the registration fee? It's one word um, and uh, you should not write in cash. You should not write uh, by cash. So not in cash, not by cash, just cash. Okay, no by cash. All right, just cash, simplify, all right? Um, I believe the instructions say uh, no more than two words, so you could write by cash, but it's not necessary, okay? So just simply cash, like that, and you're good to go, okay? All right, um, students, uh, so question here. How many uh, did you get correct uh, from 10 in part one? What was your total? Okay. What was your total? Now, ideally, um, in uh, the listening section for part one, you get nine or 10 correct. Okay, nine or more, which is nine or 10. Okay, so you're looking for nine, 10. If you're getting less than nine, you really have to be careful because part two, part three, and four are more difficult. So Amra, getting 10 out of 10 is beautiful. Anna, seven out of 10 should be better, okay. Um, Zhao Lin Tun, eight out of 10. It's okay, but you definitely wanna go for that closer to nine or 10, okay, all right. 
So save your marks. We're going to do part two right now. We're going to listen and answer questions, okay? Again, uh, don't put your answers in the chat because that will confuse people. Save your marks. Um, we are going to do this whole listening test uh, over the course of this class and a future class as well next week. So save your marks, uh, pay attention. We are switching to uh, our website here in a second. And right now, get ready to listen to uh, part two. They don't say section two anymore, they say part two. Uh, this is track two, by the way. And we're listening about the Titanic. So uh, get your headphones on if you've got them. And let's do some uh, listening. All right, let me hop back to the website audio here and um, get ready to listen. Answer while you listen. Don't put your answers into the chat. Put them into a separate document. Here we go, everybody. Now turn to section two. Take some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Listening section two. You will hear a radio presenter interviewing a woman about the infamous ship Titanic. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen carefully to the interview and answer questions 11 to 16. Good afternoon to all our listeners and welcome back to History Now, a weekly program that reflects on subjects of historical influence. Today we are going to speak with Dr. Andrea Smithson, an historian at the University of Glasgow. Good afternoon, Andrea. Good afternoon, Peter. What are you going to talk about today, Andrea? I'll be talking about one of the most catastrophic events in maritime history the sinking of the Titanic. I can't wait for you to begin. Thanks, Peter. The Titanic was an enormous ship. The makers called it unsinkable. From end to end, it measured approximately the length of three football pitches. It had the capacity to carry over 3,500 passengers, as well as the over 800 people on the crew of the ship. Despite its massive size and impressive capacity, the Titanic was able to cruise at a speed of 40 knots. This was in large part due to the 59,000 horsepower engine. Just how much is 59,000 HP? Well, in literal terms, it's like being pulled by 59,000 horses. More realistically, it's the equivalent power of 500 cars. On the maiden voyage that left Southampton, England, on the 10th of April 1912, there were 1,343 passengers and 885 crew members. There were three different classes of tickets for those aboard the Titanic. A third class ticket was the lowest level ticket. At the time, it cost between three and eight pounds. A second class ticket cost about 12 pounds. A first class ticket cost anywhere from 30 pounds all the way up to 870 pounds. In today's money, 870 pounds is over 20,000 pounds. You may be wondering what the people in the first class were paying for. They had luxurious rooms on the highest decks, delicious meals for breakfast, lunch and dinner, as well as the finest entertainment money could buy. On the other hand, those in third class slept in cramped rooms which were quite plain and small and did not have access to the fine restaurants and entertainment on the upper decks of the ship. Now I'd like to tell you about a few lesser known facts about the Titanic. Although there were four large funnels, or smokestacks, on the Titanic, only three of them were functional. One of the funnels was put there just to make the ship look even bigger and more impressive. The ship carried over 70 tonnes of food for the passengers, including over 40,000 eggs. You now have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 17 to 20. 
On the night of the 14th of April 1912, on her maiden voyage, the Titanic hit an iceberg. About three hours later, early morning the next day, the ship sank. The reasons for the sinking are numerous. First, the watertight doors, which were supposed to keep water out, didn't work properly. Second, the night of the 14th of April was incredibly calm on the water. Icebergs are easily spotted when there are waves crashing against them. On this night, there were no waves. The strength of the metal in the Titanic was not as it should have been. The metal became brittle in the freezing cold and was easily broken by the iceberg. Another big factor was the inability of the Titanic to turn quickly. Once the lookouts had spotted the iceberg, the captain ordered the ship turned, but it was too late. If the ship had been able to turn faster, it would have missed the iceberg. One of the biggest tragedies about the sinking was that there were not enough lifeboats for everyone on the ship. In addition to this, many of the lifeboats left the sinking vessel with less than half of the people they were designed to carry. For example, the first lifeboat off the Titanic left with only 27 of the allotted 65 passengers. This unfortunate occurrence can be attributed to panic on the part of the passengers and crew. One can only imagine the sheer terror on board the ship that early morning. 1,523 out of the 2,228 passengers and crew perished that morning. Most died from the near freezing temperature of the Atlantic Ocean. Others drowned after being trapped in the lower decks. 705 people lived to tell their story, most of them women and children who were put on the lifeboats before the grown men were. Because of this, 94% of the first class passenger women and children were saved, while only 14% of the third class passenger men survived. Overall, 60% of the first class occupants survived, while only 25% of the third class ticket holders lived in the aftermath of this tragedy. That is the end of section two. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. All right, use that half minute, that 30 seconds to check your answers, everybody. Um, so I'm just gonna stop the audio on our website here and then we'll go through the answers together now. So this was section two about the Titanic. And the first question here was, what was the overall capacity of the Titanic? This was actually a fairly uh, tricky question. So let's just uh, go back to our fun um, interactive answer sheet here. And uh, let's um, take some uh, votes here. So uh, what was the overall capacity of the Titanic? If you think it was 800 A, then type one into the chat. If you think it was 3,500 or uh, B, then put that. And if you think it was 4,300, then uh, put uh, three in there. Well, it looks like we're getting a lot of different answers. Um, and again, uh, pay attention to the question here. So it looks like about half of the people or more than half of the people would get this wrong. Okay, um, so the question here is asking, uh, what was the overall capacity? Overall capacity means uh, total, okay? So that means total. So IELTS, as I always tell candidates, it's a thinking exam. So you're not just matching words to words, but you're actually listening and thinking. And because of that, they always include one or two of these kinds of questions in the listening and in the reading where you have to do a bit of extra math, okay? So here um, it said 3,500 passengers uh, plus um, 800 crew equals 4,500 total. So the uh, correct answer for this one was C, 4,000, uh, sorry, 300. <laughs> My math is terrible. I should uh, definitely not be teaching math, right? Um, so uh, it's, uh, yeah, 4,300, okay? 
So 800 plus uh, 3,500, uh, 4,300, yeah. Okay, so C is the correct answer. Good thing I'm not teaching math. Um, <clears throat> and Harvinder says, how? Um, well, because it says the overall capacity, okay? Again, one more time. So overall capacity means total. And uh, the speaker says the Titanic can fit 3,500 passengers and 800 crew members. So a total of 4,300. Okay. So uh, it looks like most of you got it correct, about 60% and 39% uh, here. So I can show you. So, yep. See, most of you got it right. 60.87% 60, got it right. Okay, so pay attention to those uh, trickier questions, okay? Now, uh, the next question was, um, uh, what was the cost of a third class ticket? And I was kind of listening for those key words. I was listening especially for this third class ticket. Um, so here, um, what was the cost of the third class ticket? Was it... Uh, a, 30 to 870 pounds, uh, B, uh, one to two pounds, or C, uh, three to eight pounds. We've got a lot of C's and we've got a lot of threes. Um, yeah, the poll will take the three. Um, I should take this off. I'm just probably yelling at you. Somebody should be like, Adrian, what are you listening to? Nothing. I'm listening to myself screaming. Um, so yeah, the correct answer here was definitely uh, C, right? Uh, it was pretty straightforward. So you know, she very clearly says the cost of a third class ticket was between three and eight pounds. Okay, so if you got that, uh, fantastic. All right, um, let's go to the next one. Now this was kind of an interesting question. Okay, so let me show you how this one works. Okay, so this is the multi-multiple choice one, right? Now there's a very important strategy here. So this was questions fifth, or sorry, 13 to 15, and you will always see at least one question like this in the listening section, where you have this multi-multiple choice. And a lot of students complain, they're like, this question is so hard, right? Well, it's because the students are trying to catch each of the questions, um, and there's just too much information, okay? TMI, too much information, TMI. We say that, TMI. You can't catch it. Even as a native speaker, it's very hard to catch all of this information that's here, okay? So don't worry about that. Instead, what you want to do is take notes, okay? Notice how I took some notes. So when I heard this part, when I heard about the benefits of a first class ticket, I wrote down luxurious room, delicious meals, and entertainment. So I, I just wrote those down, right? So that helps me to answer those questions, okay? Uh, let's see what you thought were the answers to this. So here, you can uh, give me uh, more than one choice, all right? So what were the benefits of a first class ticket? Watertight doors, luxurious rooms, great entertainment, high quality meals, access to a casino for those gamblers out there, um, and lower deck rooms. So here you can put one, two, three, four, five, and you can put multiple. So you can put one, then you can put two, then you can put four, then you can put five, up to you, whatever you think it is. Just put one number at a time so the system registers it. So number two definitely looks like a very popular answer, luxurious rooms. Now remember students, it's three answers, so you have to answer three. If you get all three correct, you get three points. If you get two correct, you get two points. If you get one correct, you get one point, but definitely choose three don't just choose two don't just choose one i've seen candidates do that where they think it's like a regular multiple choice question really pay attention to the number set 13 to 15 so 13 14 15 here all right and i can see that we have a couple of gamblers in the crowd today thinking about the casino the casino is wrong although they probably did have a casino we don't hear the speaker talk about that 
Otherwise, we've got a pretty good split between uh, these three. And those were the correct answers. Um, so those of you who uh, chose casino, you gambled wrong. That's a wrong answer. Okay. Um, the correct answers are these three. No watertight doors. No watertight doors. Okay, that's why the ship sank. Okay, uh, let's keep going here. So uh, that was uh, uh, 14 to 15. And there was one more question here. And that was this, um, this question here with this uh, graph. So which of the following is the best representation of the Titanic? Now, when I was reviewing the questions during the beginning, right? I showed you that the big difference are the smokestacks or chimneys. There's five, four, and three. So five chimneys, four chimneys, three chimneys. Now, if you have seen the pictures of the real Titanic um, or the movie, then you might know this anyway. Uh, use your knowledge. The IELTS, it does use accurate knowledge. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, here again, um, uh, let's see, uh, so um, we had A, five smokestacks, uh, B, uh, four smokestacks, or C would be three. Um, I don't even have C up there for you, so I'm giving you a 50-50 here. It's one of those. Yeah, B, correct. Okay. All right, good. Yeah. Bing. Right. Four smokestacks, so... Whoever chose that, good for you. It was B, okay, it was this middle one. They said, uh, okay, here's a bonus question. Let's see how many of you were really paying attention. Bonus time. You get a bonus question here. Uh, how many of the uh, chimneys actually worked? Okay, this is my bonus question here. So, uh, how, many, how many of the smokestacks smokestacks actually worked on the Titanic okay and again uh, when you're doing listening practice at home have fun with it ask some extra questions okay uh, try Duke Fum says it was three Steve Thompson says three Enterlin says two the answer is three three so three of them worked, one did not. Why? Why would they do that? That's just crazy. So why did the engineers or the builders, I don't know if it was the engineers, let's blame the builders. Uh, why did the builders do that? They answer that in the audio. So why, why would somebody do something so crazy? Put a huge smokestack on the Titanic that doesn't even work. Anybody know that? Um, answer yeah Baljeet says one for making it large yeah one was just to make it look big I guess they did not worry about fuel cost back then right <laughs> these days they wouldn't do that just to save fuel or gas can you imagine how much more extra fuel it took uh, for the weight of that uh, smokestack. I mean, those smokestacks were huge. That was probably the same weight as half the passengers, right? So they probably did not worry about, um, about uh, gas cost back in those days or the cost of coal as much. All right, different time than what we have today. That's for sure. Um, all right, uh, so then we got into this flow chart, right? And the flow chart uh, had some fill in the blanks. Um, the first one was um, extremely calm night. There were no something crashed against the iceberg. Um, what was it? What was not hitting um, the iceberg? What's the answer? It's not only question mark. Uh, it's not 14th of April. So what is um, 17? I like that big answer. That's big because a lot of people are answering that, which is good. Waves, boom. 
Yeah, a lot of people are writing waves in there. Plural, the S is super important. You can count waves. Waves is getting bigger and bigger as more and more people are answering waves. It's not decorations, it's waves. We've got a little pumpkin emoji in there as well. I don't think IELTS will take that as your answer. Um, a sad emoji, well, the examiner might feel a little bit of empathy for you, but uh, no points. Um, the answer is waves. So W-A-V-E-S, right? So here's the iceberg, the wave, boom, hitting it, boom, hitting it. You can kind of see it when that's happening, right? Ooh, there's the iceberg. Um, but uh, no waves, calm night, can't see the iceberg. It's invisible. Okay, uh, good. It looks like most of you got that. So if you got waves, um, then give yourself a point. Uh, if not, um, then uh, don't give yourself a point. If you don't have S on the end of the word, don't give yourself a point. The next question in the flowchart was, many something left the ship half full. Shub Sharad, that's great. I'm happy that with the EOR, your scores improved. Fantastic. Okay, um, many, um, something left the ship half full. What, what left the ship? So there's not much that can leave the ship. It's not light boats. Ooh, we've got a good answer there. Lifeboats. There we go. That's the right answer. It's getting bigger and bigger. That means more and more of you are answering it correctly. Lifeboats, one word. Yeah, look at it, it's growing and growing. The more of you that give the correct answer in this cool little uh, program here, the bigger it will get. So see, it's gotten quite huge because many of you gave the answer lifeboats and it's even getting bigger still. Uh, lifeboats is one word, lifeboats, lifeboats. If you write it as two words, Technically, it's wrong, but you might luck out. They might give it to you. It's one word, though. Okay, uh, one last question. Uh, or actually, sorry, two last questions. I kind of jumped a question here. Um, let's uh, jump back a question. Um, this was question 18. This was before lifeboats. Um, and it was, whoa, that was a big... <laughs> Big answer, super fast. Um, the watertight something failed, although this is a wrong answer. There's something wrong with this. It's not door. It's not a door. It's wrong. Still wrong. Still wrong. There we go. Now I see the right answer. It's so small though. Okay, be careful with your plurals. Oh, it's getting bigger, which is good to see. A lot of you are figuring out, wait a second, it's doors, uh, yeah, there it is, okay. So watertight doors, it's a plural. There, we, now it's bigger. Now we have more correct answers than wrong answers, okay. Good, um, watertight doors, yes. Correct answer right there, watertight doors failed, okay. So if you got doors, it's, it's plural, right? The Titanic, tit it's a huge boat, not just one door, there are many doors. Okay, so doors, there, now, it's good, okay. Watertight doors failed. Awesome, okay. Uh, one more question, last one. It's a very sad one, but it's true and it's important here. Um, so this last question was um, 1,523 people die. Most from the freezing cold temperatures of the what? This looks correct, but it's still wrong for some reason. It's the right idea, but the wrong uh, spelling or the wrong uh, way to write it. Uh, the A is small and the O is small. It has to be a big A and it has to be a big O. Okay, if you write a small a and a small o, let me make this a little bit clearer for you. So uh, there's the uh, correct answer coming up. Let me kind of resize this so you can, there, um, so you can see it a little bit better. So there you go. Uh, there's the uh, Atlantic Ocean 
Yes, the freezing cold temperature of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, but again, students just get into the habit of correct capitalization. Otherwise, you stand to make the same mistake in the real exam. That has to be a big O and that has to be a big A. If you write a small A, small O, the examiner will mark it wrong. You cannot use small letters for proper nouns in the IELTS exam. It has to be a big A and a big O to get it correct. If the A is capital and the O is small, you still get it wrong, okay? All right, um, so it's not the Antarctic, it's the Atlantic Ocean, okay? It has to be the Atlantic Ocean. All right, um, students, uh, so count up your uh, marks. Um, how, how did you do from 20? For those of you that were here for the, um, the whole class for part one and part two together what was your mark out of uh, 20 how did you do okay we've got some uh, 19 out of 20 we've got some 17 out of 20 17 is pretty good so um, in part one and part two basically you're looking for 16 or more if you got at least 16 correct for part one and part two, you're on the right track for a high band score. Like you can get a band seven, eight, nine. Uh, no, no nine, sorry. But you can get a band seven or an eight, uh, 8.5. Mm, yes, but you can't make any more mistakes. Nine, you can only make one mistake. So if you got 16, you can't get a nine, but you can still get a very high band score. Okay, uh, now keep in mind students that um, we uh, have a, a score calculator on our website. So when we do the rest of this listening, so when we get into listening parts three and four, then um, uh, we can uh, calculate our total band score. Okay, and we're going to do that um, next uh, week. Tomorrow we still have more live classes, but those classes will be speaking classes. Uh, tomorrow. Again, everybody remember that for this audio, uh, for our practice exams, you want to go to our uh, website. Um, you want to click this big red button to join our premium IELTS package. That's just right above my head there. It's a one-time payment, lifetime access. We're IDP, British Council Partners. You can even register in some countries for your IELTS test through our website. Um, we are British Council agents, we're professionals, we know what's going on with this, um, and we're psychologists, so we know how you learn and how you think about language. General IELTS, gieltshelp.com, green background, click that big red button there, okay? All right, uh, students, uh, so um, again, I will be back uh, tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed this uh, listening session with kind of that new uh, interface that that we were using. We'll be using that more and more and we'll have more and more exciting and fun ways to interact with all of you. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. I learned a couple of uh, interesting points myself and I look forward to seeing all of you in tomorrow's class. Once again, uh, visit us at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. Have an awesome start to your weekend and I send you all my love from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, uh, and uh, bidding you goodbye for now.